Okay, and this one, a little bit different here. We're not given transformations. We're asked to evaluate the double integral over r of 2x minus y divided by x minus 3y dA, where r is a parallelogram enclosed by the lines 2x minus y equals 0, 2x minus y equals 4, x minus 3y equals 1, x minus 3y equals um, 6. So in the first step, you want to come up with your transformations. It's not given to you here, so there's a little more work in the first step. Is there an obvious thing to set u equal to, an obvious thing to set v equal to? So 2x minus y, you see that over and over again on the boundary and, in, and at least once, well, once in the integrand, right? And then v you see as the denominator in the integrand. And uh, technically, what is this? This isn't t, is it? Everything's reversed. The, the inputs are x and y instead of u and v. So technically, this is t inverse, if you love notation. Although, I suppose you could get away without knowing that. But that's, that's t inverse, right? The output is, is a u and a v value. And the input is an x and a y value. So this maps the other way around. This maps from, oh, if the input's x, y, it's mapping from r in the x, y plane to s in the u, v plane, right? But again, if you, if you th there is a tendency for information overload in this section. If you just want to remember that you need the Jacobi in one way or another, then the only additional fact you're going to need is, oh, since it's u in terms of x, y, and v in terms of x, y, you've got to flip the Jacobian, right? Because when you find the Jacobian, you're going to be finding uh, the Jacobian of, okay, what's it going to be, x and y or u and v? Normally, in the last one, what was it? It was the Jacobian of x and y with respect to u and v. So what does this one have to be? Jacobian of u and v with respect to x and y. Remember, the inputs are al always on the bottom, or the outputs are always on top, whatever you want to think, however you want to think about it. And then uh, you got to get this guy and then remember to flip it because, okay, we want, for our setup, we want the Jacobian of always. We always want the Jacobian of x and y with respect to u and v. What's easy to get here is the Jacobian of u and v with respect to x and y. So you have to remember to flip it. And it, it, it's part of the reason for the notation. It is true that when you flip it, uh, when you take the reciprocal, it is equal to uh, when you take the reciprocal of, of the guy in blue, you do, you do get the guy in yellow, which is nice, right? That's the reason for the notation. The notation's no accident, right? They act like fractions. Um, so um, let's think of it this way then. Let's set up the determinant. Okay, so we've interchanged the roles of u and x and v and y, right? So now the upper left-hand entry in our Jacobian matrix, take the derivative of u with respect to, say, x. What do you get? 2, and then go to the derivative of v, the second equation, derivative of v with respect to x. 1. Go down to the next row in your Jacobian matrix, go back to the first equation, derivative of u with respect to y this time, right? We just did both of these derivatives with respect to x. Now do it with respect to y. Derivative of u with respect to y is Negative 1 derivative of v with respect to y is negative 3. It's nice when all the coefficients are different. Then you, then you kn if, if all the coefficients are different, then you almost can't get it wrong because if you see a, re a, a repetition of numbers over here and all the coefficients are different, you did something wrong, right, when taking the derivative. A and everything is linear, right? Yeah. Um, anyway, if you take that Jacobian, what do you get? Yeah, it is negative 6 minus a negative 1, right? So this guy times this guy minus this guy times this guy. And, and that would be negative 5, wouldn't it? Now, what do we want? The, the derivative, or the Jacobian, sorry, of x and y with respect to u and v. And what would that be? Negative 1 fifth. And when we, what do we have to remember when we plug that in as a factor in the integrand? Absolute value, right? Because it's, a, it's, it's involved in getting the correct area element, right? So it's not going to be negative. Area is not going to be negative here. Okay, any questions on that part? It's not so bad, right? It gets a little more complicated if the equations aren't linear, but you can worry about that in your next 
more advanced class. Um, I think we could graph R easily enough. Those are just linear equations, but I think we can get away without doing it. You want to get away without doing it? Let's just graph S. So, I mean, think about it. We know the, the XY equations. Let me see if I can make that straight. We know the XY equations. The XY boundary equations are given by 2X minus Y equals 0, 2X minus Y equals 4, X minus 3Y equals 1, and X minus 3Y equals 6. And if you graph those in the XY plane, you'd get parallelogram. Those, those lines are not nice and horizontal necessarily, right? No, well, none of them are really, or vertical. So you get a parallelogram. So what are we hoping to do with a parallelogram? What, what would you like to turn a parallelogram into that's a little more well-behaved? A square or a rectangle, right? Yeah, so the UV equations we're hoping to be at least a rectangle. And these are, again, these are boundary equations. So it's really easy transformation. So this is the easier than the last problem, whereas part one, step one, was harder than the last problem. So 2x minus y equals 0, that's the same as saying u equals 0, right? 2x minus y equals 4, u equals 4. x minus 3y equals 1 is the same as saying v equals 1. x minus 3y equals 6 is the same as saying v equals Hey, that's not so bad, right? Those are all co constant. Really, we don't have to graph the thing. I, I will for completeness, but because the limits of integration are constant, it's not going to be a big mystery what they are. So this would be the UV plane that we're plotting uh, S in, right? These are the boundary equations for S. These are the boundary equations for R. So uh, U equals 0. What would that correspond to? Yeah, part of the v-axis, right? Let's see if it shows up better in red. Eh. Oh, well. It'll be part of the v-axis. Pretty sure it's in the first quadrant. That's the part we're interested in. u equals 4. Maybe over here, right? So we'll just label that 4. Or u equal. well, you know what we'll do? We'll label the actual graph of the equation, u equals 4, u equals 0. Everybody with me? And then v actually starts where? 1, so I've got to raise it up a little bit. This equation is v equals 1 to v equals, maybe I'll make 6 right there, so v equals 6. And then I can erase I guess this extra part down here, right? So that S really shows up in here. Everybody see what S is? So then in step three, I think I can fit this all on the same screen. If we set up our integrand, okay, double integral, what should we put in right away so we don't forget? Jacobian, I'll, I'll put in the absolute value of negative one-fifth. I'll go dv du, which is analogous to dy dx. What it was the uh, integrand? Oh, what does the integrand become based on our transformations? U over V. And then uh, what does V range from? Just look at your rectangle or look at your UV equations. V goes from? 1 to 6. U goes from? 0 to 4. Does everybody believe that? Do you want to see me evaluate this? I see s more head shaking yes than no, so I'll evaluate it for you. Um, what can we bring out front? Positive 1 fifth, right? Take the absolute value. Double integral, 0 to 4. Uh, well, I'll go ahead and just write down the whole simplified setup. dv du. Um, can we split it up? Why not? Do it. It, it just looks better if you do it. 
Integral zero to four of what? Uh, it's u, right? So it's got to be u du, right? Outer limits of integration correspond to u values. So, uh, and then that's, so that's, oh, I already put the du. Okay, hold on. Let me erase that. And then times the integral from 1 to 6 of 1 over v dv. So these aren't so bad, right? So what do we have? We have 1 fifth out front, and then we integrate. What do we get? u squared over 2. So I'll, I'll make it times 1 half uh, u squared. Evaluated from 0 to 4, right? And I'll, I'm just going to go ahead and evaluate this, too. What, is, what, what do you get when you integrate 1 over v? ln of v. Do I need absolute values around it? No, because it's, the inputs are positive, right? Everybody believe that so far? All right, so, th uh, okay, this becomes what out uh, when you put in the 4? 16 minus 0. Okay, let's go ahead and divide by 2 right away. 8, so 8 fifths. Okay, 8 fifths. Does everybody see that? That's this whole first part. And then natural log of what? 6 minus natural log of 1, but what's the natural log of 1? 0. 